you inside the Ferrell Center from our home to yours. Chris Spatola in North Carolina. I am Rich Hollenberg at home in Florida. Chris, the narrative so far this college hoop season has been Gonzaga, Baylor, and everyone else. So many superlatives for this Baylor team, offensively and defensively. What keeps them motivated going into a game like tonight? Well, championship teams, great teams, Rich, they don't play to an opponent, they play to a standard. Their, their habits guide them. And Baylor's habits are outstanding. Their execution, they play hard, they're unselfish. I mean, look at these numbers. These are national numbers that they are putting up. It's a team that missed a chance at a championship last season. They are championship worthy, of course, this season. But you get there by not losing games like tonight. Not a lot of good news this year for Kansas State, but some coming into tonight. Losers of six straight, and they are welcoming back Nigel Pack, the second leading scorer. He's in the starting lineup, and this is Bruce Weber's seventh different starting lineup this season, Chris. They need his points. You, you saw the scoring differential there without him. They also need his handling. They're coming off a game where they had 28 turnovers against West Virginia. They need his handling. And oh, by the way, Nigel Pack, welcome back. You get one of the best backcourts in America. Kansas State controls the opening tip wearing their road lavender uniforms. A throwback look for them. And here's Pack 24. Gives it up to Casey Eziegu who missed his fair share of games. He's off on his first shot. And here comes prospective player of the year candidate, Jared Butler, number 12 in green. Now Bruce Weber going with Easy Agu and Bradford in the lineup together, I think to match the rebounding and size of Baylor. There's an offensive rebound by Flo Thamba and a foul is called with less than one minute gone by so far. Flo Thamba, one of the starting five for Scott Drew's Baylor Bears. They have not changed that starting lineup the entire year. And Chris, they're one of the oldest teams in college basketball. And that's why they're one of the best. Butler, that one's waved off by referee Doug Sermons. Butler called for the travel, the first turnover of the game, and it'll be Kansas State basketball. Well, we talked about Baylor having the same starting five for all 14 of their games. Bruce Weber has had to play mix and match. Some bad luck is an understatement for Weber's Wildcats this year. Lots of injuries, COVID protocols, but now they are finally at the point where they're almost, almost completely healthy. That one rolls off the rim. Mark Vital the rebound, and Macy Oteague brings it up for the Bears. Ranked second in the country, undefeated at 14-0, undefeated at 7-0 in conference play. You know, one area where turnovers Baylor... to start. Yeah, I was going to say, one area where Baylor has struggled is they turn the ball over a lot. They, they have of late. That, that was just, that was a real small window to try to fit that in there for Butler. Deshaun Gordon off the mark, and but Baylor wants to run. Here's Teague with the step through, and the follow by Butler goes. He opens the scoring. What a week it was for Jared Butler, the preseason All-American, averaging 26 points and seven dimes in his two games last week. I talked to two, nice set play here, nicely done, good execution on the back screen, lob over the top. I, I talked to two coaches this week in the Big 12, Rich, about Baylor, and the first thing both of them said, the first thing, you have to take them out of transition. They get threes in transition, they can finish in transition, they average almost 20 points a game in transition. Well, Scott Drew's got this a uh, Baylor team as a well-oiled machine in his 18th season. He's what I call the Ted Lasso of college basketball coaching, Chris. If you haven't watched that, if you're watching at home and you don't know who Ted Lasso is, check it out on Apple+. Plus. It is all positivity for him, one of the most optimistic guys out there. And Chris, he's got every reason to be optimistic. This team is poised for another deep run in the NCAA tournament that they missed out on a year ago. Uh, he and his staff have, have done an exceptional job. And I think one of the under-discussed things about this team and about this program, Rich, of late, is their ability to identify underrated, under-recruited recruits, transfers, 
and then develop those guys. A, a lot of these guys who, who dot this roster over the last few years, Macy Oteague being an example, transferred from UNC Asheville, wasn't highly recruited before he got to Asheville. They have developed those guys. This program is about process, and it's a program with a lot of character. Here's T, a little hitch in that three-point shot, but if it works, keep firing away, and that's what he does. Early 5-2 Baylor lead. Here's Mike McGurl. Can't find the bottom of the bucket, and Vital clears for the Bears. Mark Vital, Mr. Do Work, as he calls himself on his Twitter handle, and that's what he does. All the dirty work. Nice drive by Davion Mitchell, and the three-headed monster that is the Baylor backcourt, all in the scoring column. They all drive it, and the outstanding spacing in the half court is what creates the openings for those drives and you're playing a team tonight in kansas state that has a hard time all year guarding one-on-one -on -one and guarding off the dribble here's butler gets the shooter's touch two buckets for jared butler he has four and the baylor lead is up to seven with 16.47 to go and a timeout on the floor a 7-0 Baylor run. We'll take a quick time out, 30 seconds, be back right after this. My auntie called me. She said, uncle's had a heart attack. I needed him to be here. Your heart isn't just yours. Protect it with Bayer Aspirin. Be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. With T-Mobile for Business, your business has an easy choice. The largest 5G network, award-winning customer satisfaction, insanely great value. Choose all three, ready when you are. Quick timeout called by Bruce Weber from Kansas State to try to stem this seven-zip Baylor run as the Bears look to remain undefeated on the season and move to 15-0, and they're off to a good start, Chris. This is what they do. They drive the basketball. This is Davion Mitchell, and the spacing is outstanding, and you have to respect it because they make 10 threes a game. But when you space the floor like they do, that's what creates those driving lanes. And as we know, all three of those starting guards are so dynamic off the bounce, and they're unselfish. So if that layup's not there, they always know they have a pitch out for three. When you take a deeper dive into the analytics, Ken Pomeroy, his rankings for efficiency, Baylor number three, off offensive efficiency, number one, defensive efficiency, and right on cue, Mark Vital picks the pocket of the Kansas State Wildcats. Here's Vital aggressive on the offensive end. Bamba picks it up. It's a scramble for the loose ball. It's gonna be possession arrow to the Baylor Bears. And things already a little chippy and talkative in the scrum there, as you saw. There's Bruce Weber, 479 career wins in his 23 years as head coach in basketball, ninth in Manhattan, Kansas. And this is a man who has been on quite the roller coaster ride throughout his career. He had such success at Illinois, moved over to Kansas State. He won a Big 12 title a couple of years ago, took the team to an Elite Eight. He knows what it takes to win in the Big 12 and this team will be on the rise sooner than later. Baylor does. The first three of the game. Baylor does five, six things a game that you can't teach and you can't guard. But probably more than five or six. I mean, it, it's really, I mean, they've got, those guys are allowed such freedom within this offense, and they're so dynamic. It was interesting when we talked to Bruce Weber on our Zoom call about the last time these two teams met, which was a 100 to 69 beatdown by Baylor. He said, we lost by infinity. I didn't want to watch that game, but we waited until after Christmas to watch it. They played that game on December 19th. And what can you take from a game like that, Chris? It's a great question. I mean, first of all, you know, and I started out saying you got to limit threes. I mean, Baylor had 15 threes in that game. Macy Oteague, Davion Mitchell combined for 43. 
I mean, they just were so good offensively, and this is a K-State team, you've already seen it in the early going here, that has really struggled on the defensive end. And now Adam Flagler off the bench and in the scoring column. But when we come back, Mr. Dework doing all the dirty work, how Mark Vital impacts the game for the Bears. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basket number two, Baylor Bears look every bit the second best team in the country. They're on a 15-0 run. They lead Kansas State 17 to two. Rich Hollenberg, Chris Spatola, Mark Vital, Chris, is playing in his 110th game as a Baylor Bear, and he is Mr. Unselfish. Well, on this play here, Rich, he facilitates for these guards. He's guarded as a non-shooter, because he's a non-scorer. He doesn't touch the ball here, but he gets his team teammate a shot. He gets Jared Butler a shot there by screening twice, and then rolling hard. You know, sometimes we throw the word around unselfish as kind of just a throwaway word. Unselfish is what this team does best, Rich. They are, there's no jealousy, there's no outside noise, they don't care who's taking a shot, and that last play we just showed is a perfect example of a guy who's not going to take a lot of shots, but he's going to do what he needs to do, whether it's being a screen setter, whether it's rolling hard to the basket, whether it's going to the offensive glass, whatever it is, this team, every single guy is lining up to do his job. And Chris, just to pay off Mark Vital, even though he doesn't have to score for them to win, he certainly did in their last game at Oklahoma State, put up a career high 19 to go along with five rebounds, two blocks, and two steals. A little bit of everything from number 11. Well, and that, I mean, that compounds the point. Right? I mean, like, he's capable. And now I don't think you're necessarily going to win a national championship if he's your main scorer. But it doesn't bother him. Like, what do you need me to do? You need me to be a screen setter? They're not going to guard me. I'm a free screener. Jonathan Chamwa Chachua in the lineup now. They call him Everyday John or EJ because of his hustle. Fits right into this Baylor makeup. Loose ball, another steal, it's locked up, and it's going to be Baylor basketball on the tie-up. You talk about doing the little things, Chris. This is an undefeated second-ranked team, and they are diving on the floor like they are playing for their lives. It's hard taking the ball baseline, too. That's where they want it, and they converge so well. Well, I stand corrected. They give the ball to Kansas State. So it's Mike McGurl, number zero in Lavender. Guarded by Adam Flagler. Transfer from Presbyterian. Scott Drew has made a living on getting transfers and having them fit right in to this Baylor culture. Here's Davion Bradford, the big man. Lost it. Another turnover forced by this Baylor defense. And we've got a foul on the floor. There's Adam Flagler at 10 points in their last outing against Oklahoma State in that comeback win. You don't have to say that too many times when you're talking about Baylor's season. Haven't been the hunter very much. And now a chance to rest some of the stars and starters and get some of what could be the best bench in basketball on the floor. Here's T. Dials it up himself. Chamwa Chachua. An and one opportunity for everyday John. He is an unbelievable story. You know, he, he, he has such a good feel. I, you know, I've been around a lot of international players through the years, Rich, and, and kids from another country typically don't have a good feel. Not all of them, but most of them. They don't know how to talk the game real well. They don't. They just don't have a good feel. Jonathan Chatma Chachua has a, an outstanding feel, and, and I think a lot of it has to do with he spent the bulk of last year watching film. He was roommates with Freddie Gillespie, and I was talking to... Uh, 
I was talking to uh, Scott Drew about this uh, a, a few weeks ago about, you know, watching tape and they have a, a program called Just Play and, you know, they can track how much tape their guys are watching. And last year, they would track Chamwa Chachua was watching tape all the time, just was drinking it up. He wore Freddie Gillespie out. I mean, wore him out, asking him questions, picking his brain. And that's why he developed such a good feel coming into this season. It's really an amazing story. And you couple that with the fact that the coaching staff says he does everything at full speed. So I guess he even watches tape at full speed, to your point. This defense has really bared down. As good as the offense has been, the defense has been just as impressive. And there is just the second field goal since the first one at the 18-11 mark. Antonio Gordon with the bucket. Twenty to five, Baylor lead. Seven minutes gone by in the first half. Here's Matthew Meyer, never shy, misses his first shot attempt. A deep three by McGurl. Off the mark, and it's tracked down by Flagler. So we talked about how does Baylor stay motivated. How does Kansas State stay into this game when you're already down 15, just seven and a half minutes in, Chris? Well, they got to stop turning it over. I mean, that's first and foremost, particularly the live ball turnovers, and it's been an issue. You know, they have Nigel Pack back, but you know, I did their game against West Virginia the other day. They had 28 turnovers, and, and a lot of them were live ball turnovers. I mean, you just can't you can't do that and then pace is a, is a big thing here you know Kansas State plays at one of the slowest tempos in the country and you know you can't get into a track meet against this Baylor team so you got to try to take the air out of the ball a little bit but part of that starts with putting the ball through the basket which obviously they haven't been able to do yet nine points off turnovers for the Baylor Bears and they're shooting eight from 15 from the field not a lot of weak spots in this Baylor team. Here's the freshman Pat. First time back after a four game absence due to COVID protocols. He fires away from three, no good. And here comes Meyer. Baylor looking to tie their second longest win streak to start a season with a win tonight. Meyer, a lot of dribbling, but it ends up with a bucket in the paint. Another three attempts off the mark, offensive rebound. Kansas State hasn't gotten a lot of those so far but they can't cash it in. Teague from the corner, rattles it home. Maceo Teague has his second three of the night, six points for him, and the lead is back to 20 for the Bears. Transition, and that's where a lot of their threes come from, in transition. Average 10 threes a game, you've got to try to limit Baylor. Here they go again. A foul. And we have a timeout on the floor, 10.56 to go. The number two Bears on displays. Chris Patola It's coming from both areas. There's the drive in the half court, and then early offense, corner three. He's got two guys on him, says, no, 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 it's what? Baylor scores in bunches, and one of the reasons is how good they are from behind the arc. All three of these guys can really shoot it. Davion Mitchell, a much improved shooter, even after last season. They're shooting 40% from the three-point line in conference, making almost 10 a game in conference play. And a lot of them, Rich, because of the penetration, you know, Skip Prosser used to call them pumped-em threes. You're so wide open, you could pump the ball in. That's what Baylor gets. I mean, a lot of these shots they take are so open because of the creation by these guards and the spacing. Maceo Teague at the free throw line. Best free throw shooter on the team gets the first one. 
Well, we have a full day of college hoops coming up Saturday. It's all about the SEC Big 12 Challenge on ESPN. Number 15, Kansas, taking on number 18, Tennessee, in Knoxville at 6. Then we head to Rupp Arena, number 5, Texas, and Kentucky meeting for just the third time ever. Chris, you and I will have the pleasure of calling Oklahoma State and Arkansas in that SEC Big 12 Challenge. Cade Cunningham will be back in action. He's taken the last two games off. Here's Teague again. And I stand corrected, Chris Patola. It's Macy and Teague who is Mr. Do Work on Twitter. Mark Vital is the villain on Twitter. He does work too, though. We've seen them both do it tonight. Three threes for Teague. He already has 11 on the game. And another turnover by K-State. Here's an easy two by Butler. I didn't know you were tracking Twitter handles quite like you are. Very prolific with the Twitter yeah, handles. Yeah, I, I troll Baylor Twitter uh, at, at certain times. Let's see what the kids are saying. A 32 to five lead. Kansas State, five points and six turnovers. More turnovers than points. Five ball turnover for a big time touchdown. And how about Jared Butler dunking this year? Dunked for the first time in a game earlier this season, getting himself one there. That's right. And that was, a, that was a that was a punt of dunk. <laughs> Butler's first career dunk came earlier this season at Ames, Iowa against Iowa State. Now he's got two to his credit. And what a year. It, uh, for the large part of this season, Chris, I think most people were saying, hand the player of the year award to Matt Garza, or Luca Garza rather. I think now Jared Butler has firmly put himself in that race. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, and you know, his improvement year over year, he, he flirted with the NBA, or at least went through the process this offseason, coming back was the right call. He's gotten better. I, you know, he's put himself in a position to be a pro at some point. He's gotten better every single year. I mean, he's so high character. I, there's not enough superlatives you, you can throw out about Jared Butler. Here's Teague in transition. The one more to Meyer. And an and one opportunity for Matthew Meyer. And this is what Baylor is all about. Meyer makes the bucket. Everyone on the team is thrilled. If you walked in to a Baylor game or a Baylor practice with no contest, not, not having seen anybody on this team, you would look out there and say that Matthew Meyer is the most talented player on this roster. He's 6'9". He can shoot it. He can post. You, you, you put a guard on him, he's going to take you inside. He can go by big guys, so you can't guard him big. And he's become a really good passer. Meyer Jr. out of Austin, Texas. Went to Westlake High School. Nice feed. Butler to Everyday John. And John Machachua has five. Can you believe this, Chris? 38 to 5? I mean, I'm going to run out of good things to say about Baylor. I mean, this is getting... And by the way, there's not a lot of resistance. I mean, come on, Kansas State. Like, have a little pride here, man. Like, there's no resistance. They're throwing the ball all over the place. Baylor's kicking her butt down back. There's a follow in the first two of the night for Nigel Pack. Another open look. That time it's off the mark. Deep three by Butler, and he's got it. Coming into tonight, his last two games, Chris, 13 for 16 for three, and he picks up where he left off. Well, it's, it's dominating in every category, Chris. 
Yeah, well, it's they're, they're turning their defense into offense, and it's transition, and Jared Butler's showing you the hops. And then you get another one going the other way. Baylor's defense turning to offense. They are locked in. Scary good. Well, this one wouldn't be a heavyweight fight, but if it was Chris Patola, they would have TKO'd Kansas State already. Butler's up 41-7, and they've been keyed by their star, Jared Butler. Yeah, I mean, they, Butler's been great. They've all been great. Uh, you know, and it's it's kind of an open gym right now. They're, they're shooting it at a big bucket. There hasn't been a whole lot of resistance on the other side. But as we said at the top, you know, if you're a championship team, you're not going to play to your opponent. You're going to play to your standard. And, and Baylor's habits have shown up here tonight as they have all season. Another missed shot by Kansas State. That one from McGurl. Here's Butler again. Inside, Chama Chachua. And he wisely threw it off a Kansas State Wildcat, so it'll stay Baylor basketball. Does that speak to the feel of the game for JTT? It also speaks to if you're really good, even on a broken play, you're still going to come up with the ball. <laughs> you know, I mean, that was not a great pass, broken play, and yet Baylor still has an under out of bounds out of it. There's a transition bucket for Kansas State. First two of the night for Selton Miguel, a freshman out of Orlando. Butler again. Oh, that was Cryer. Oh, that's a, yeah, that was LJ Cryer. Want to give every basket to Garrett Butler. There's LJ getting some minutes. 6 1 freshman out of Katy, Texas. Tough to crack the rotation of Baylor's guards. But LJ Cryer looks like he's going to probably have some minutes tonight if things keep up the way they have been. First three free throw is good tomorrow night. It's a clash of SEC powerhouses in women's hoops. Number four, South Carolina, and Stark Vegas to take on number 21, Mississippi State. This one tips at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. South Carolina's only loss so far this season to number eight, North Carolina State. Yeah, it was early in the year. They, they have rolled through SEC play, though. Both free throws good by Miguel. He's got the last four points. And Kansas State's in double digits with six minutes to go in the first half. Trying to think, Chris, change on, things up. Go ahead. Trying to change things up a little bit there. You know, with the three-quarter press. I mean, I just trying something if you Bruce Weber. Uh, that's Nigel Pack in transition. Knocks down the two-pointer. Flagler, no. Chamwachachua. Another three-point play opportunity for Jonathan Chamwachachua. He is dynamite. And, you know, if you saw him at UNLV, you wouldn't know this is the same guy. Uh, his development over sitting out last season and then what he's done this year. You know, F Flo Thamba starts the game. But when this guy comes in, they change, both on the glass and, and more importantly, defensively. Uh, he can switch out, defend guards. You can switch with him. He is a maniacal on the glass, as you just saw there. And he's a running commentary the whole game defensively. I mean, he's quarterbacking the defense from the back line there. 
Yeah, he's a talker in a good way. Here's a three by Mike McGurl. So all of a sudden, the Kansas State offense starting to click on four straight possessions. Still a 30-point spread with under five minutes to go. Foul on the floor. You know there's going to be no quit in a Bruce Weber team. They want to grind it out, but Baylor just hasn't let them do that. Yeah. Catch and release. And Pack has seven. He's talented. You know, he missed the last four games, as you said, Rich, earlier, and, and you know, hadn't shot it well before that. But I, him being out, in all fairness, I, I think hurt their development a little bit. You know, it just to, to not have that type of a talent in your lineup for four games for a young team was going to hurt. Here's Miguel. No good, and Mitchell on the leak out. Tried to thread the needle inside, it goes out of bounds, and we have a timeout on the floor, 3.47 to go. Scott Drew's Bears rolling. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. Time report is on the way. Coming up, more on the dynamite double digit comeback in the Big East, plus another sparkling performance from Florida State. Danny Manning, other than everything, what do you like about Baylor so far? Well, I like their points in the paint, and I like the production that they're getting off their bench. This is a team that's going to go on a deep run in the tournament, and it's going to need to be multiple guys outside of the guards on this team that will help propel them to where they want to go. Uh, listen, this Baylor team is hotter than the GameStop stock from today, fellas. I mean, absolutely phenomenal effort so far. Thank you, fellas. Not just basketball, but stock tips from the guys in the halftime report that's coming up in under three and a half minutes. Rich Hollenberg, Chris Spatola. Waco, Texas, home of the Baylor Bears, number two in the country, and they are rolling right from Jump Street, 14-0, 7-0 in Big 12 play, and they're up 46-19 on Kansas State. Let me just be clear, the last guy that I would ever take stock tips from is Sean Farnham. <laughs> that was blocked by Thamba. Pass. Samba on the other end. Rewarding the big man. Defense on one side, offense on the other. McGurl, no. Here comes Mitchell. Another great pass. And Thamba gets fouled on that dunk attempt. Well, Flo Thamba doing it on both ends. There's the block on one. And then, you know, life is good if you're a big guy on this Baylor team because you're going to get it served up on a platter. Flo Thamba, 6'10 junior, originally from Congo. Spent time living in England, France, and South Africa before moving to the United States. Well, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 fans tomorrow. 15th-ranked Kansas hosts TCU at Allen Fieldhouse. Then next Tuesday, it's Kansas State, Kansas at 8 Eastern. And Saturday, February 6th, Baylor battles the Horned Frogs from TCU right here at the Farrell Center. You're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. And just 
Chalk up another thing, Chris Patola, to the ledger of strange things this season in college basketball due to COVID. We have Thursday night Big 12 basketball coming up tomorrow night. I love it. It's also given us games in the afternoon on a weekday. You get a two o'clock game or a, a four o'clock game on a weekday. Taylor already putting up half a hundred with two and a half to go in the first half. Playing inspired basketball. And if you've noticed, the names on the back of the jerseys don't match the numbers. That's because tonight they are paying homage to the Immortal 10. They do this every year. It's called the Immortal Game. This is the 94th anniversary of that terrible bus and train collision that happened back in 1927 when 10 members of Baylor's men basketball team was killed. They have a banner hung inside the Farrell Center and all the players wear the names of those deceased. Pack good on the first free throw. Well, we've talked a lot about this offense so far, Chris, for just cause with 50 points already. What about their defense? What makes ba Baylor's defense so special? You can't pick on anybody. You know, there's no guy that you can get a, a ball screen and then get him switched on to somebody and then pick on them. I mean, they all guard their position. Tremendous versatility. You know, again, with Chama Chachua, especially when he's in the game at the five, I mean, he can, you can switch with him and they have great versatility and they play hard. I mean, you know, effort, it's amazing what effort and playing hard will do to a defense. Look at Vital nearly causing the turnover there. And here's case in point. Mark Vital, one of the big men guarding Nigel Pack, a guard. And here come the Bears. You know, it's amazing, Rich, too, that they've only been playing this man-to-man -man defense for a, a year and some change, right? I mean, they really, when Tristan Clark went down last season is when they went to this man-to-man -man defense. And they look like they've been playing it since Scott Drew got here to Baylor. I mean, there, there's no hesitation in any of their rotations. They're instinctive in how they rotate. They're terrific on the ball. Testament to his coaching, one of the more underrated coaches in America. Talk about blue blood programs. Baylor doesn't necessarily come to mind, but an interesting note, they are one of five power five schools with 18 or more wins every year since 2008. The other four, Duke, Michigan State, Kansas, and Kentucky. And what do those teams have in common? They're all struggling this year a little bit, not Baylor. That bucket goes down. So now one minute remaining in the half. 52-23 Baylor. They have been on point since the opening tip. Uh, the only thing that hasn't gone right was they didn't win the opening tip, but they've won every other battle so far. Those guys, when they set a ball screen at the top, the Baylor big guys, they get a run. And, and it really, here's another live ball turnover. My goodness. You know, they get a run. They set that ball screen at the top of the key. And then nobody, it, it confuses block out responsibility. And they just crash the offensive glass. Both those guys, especially when they set that tandem screen out top. Well, it must be deja vu for Kansas State. Baylor left 56-27 at the half when they first played on December 19th. And now with time running down, we almost have an identical score now 
in Waco. Are they going to count that? I think they will. And look how upset Davion Mitchell was walking off the court. Let's take another look. There's no question. Yeah, plenty of time. I mean, that's that's uh, that's three quarter court. Nicely done. Pure. Some momentum for Kansas State going into the locker room, but they are down big. 54-26. Baylor with the lead, looking to stay undefeated on the season. Coming up on the E Trade halftime report, KC. Welcome back to Waco, Texas. The second-ranked Baylor Bears comfortably ahead of Kansas State, 54-26 at the start of the second half. Rich Hollenberg, Chris Patola. So, Chris, what happened in the first half? Well, Baylor happened. Uh, they are scary good, and I realize they're playing a Kansas State team that is not very good at all, but, you know, they were efficient, they were sharp, they played hard, they shared the basketball, uh, a handful of different guys scored and enriched the diversity in how they score is what's most impressive you need a three they'll give it to you you need a transition bucket they'll give it to you you need an offensive board bucket they'll give it to you i mean the, the diversity in this offense and then that defense leading the offense is spectacular and take a look at these numbers they are eye-popping it's the last two 20-minute halves going back to their last game which they had to come back in that game for the first time essentially all season on the road at Oklahoma State. They put up a big number on them and ended up winning that one going away. And now this, a 54-26 lead after the first half. Scott Drew starts with his starters on the floor. We'll see how long that lasts. T guarding the girl. Nigel Pack had nine points in the first half for K State. Inside, Antonio Gordon missed the bunny at close range, but got fouled and will go to the line. Gordon, a guy who, who missed some time because of injury earlier in the season, actually was really good in the first matchup against Baylor. Had 23 and 6, was 9 and 9 from the field. He's a guy, uh, Rich, I, I served for a period in a, in a place called Lawton, Oklahoma. Fort Sill is in Lawton, Oklahoma. And that's where Antonio Gordon is from. He went to Eisenhower High School in Lawton, Oklahoma. The home of the field artillery, Rich Hollenberg. Fort Sill. If you want Sooner State information, you go to Chris Spatola. Let's I tell go. everybody that all the time. Let's go. How about the Oklahoma Sooners, by the way? Top yeah. 25 team now, a couple of big wins in their back pocket, a signature win against Kansas, and then on the road against Texas. What do you think about the Sooners? You know what, it, it, it's interesting, and you brought this point up earlier when we were talking about the Sooners, doing it without Brady Manick being a major factor. You know, Austin Reeves as their point guard, his development, even just this season at that position, has been huge and if he keeps hitting shots from behind the backboard the sky is the limit <laughs> yeah brady maddock looks like larry bird austin reeves was playing like larry bird with that shot against ut there's mark vital you see the back of his jersey it says foster they are paying homage to the immortal 10 tonight it's their annual immortal 10 game where they wear the names of the deceased from that 1927 bus crash that took 10 lives on the Baylor men's basketball team. Here's Davion Bradford with his first two. 23rd dunk on the season for the seven footer out of St. Louis. Low Thamba screens and then rescreens. Teague, the runner, yes. He is so good. Teague off the, has 13. Off that one foot, Rich. He's got that mm -hmm. shot where he gets in the lane and he can hit it off balance. And, you know, he takes it off that one foot so often. 
I was thrown down base and Macy Oteet was thrown back mid-range in that shot. Little Bismarck key for my boy Chris yeah, Patola. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I got it, bro. <laughs> I'm with you. You can't slide a Bismarck key reference past, past me. You got to get up pretty early in the morning to do that. Here's Nigel Pack. He'll be a four-year player for Bruce Weber. And you were saying before the game started that this feels like the Kansas State team that Bruce Weber had a handful of years ago when all of a sudden he got a Dean Wade and a Kamal Stokes and a Barry Brown all coming in at the same time, and they all grew and succeeded together. You know, this day and age in college basketball, you know, you're going to have to have a year like this. You just are, and you have to hope that the losing doesn't affect you so much that guys start transferring, you know, going elsewhere. You hope that you can hang on to this group because I think by the end, Rich, as we know, that, that group that you're mentioning, you, you look at here at, back in 2015-16, that group stayed together ended up making an Elite Eight. So I think that's the hope if you're Bruce Weber, but you're going to have to go through a period where you play young, especially in this league, and you're going to take your lumps. There's Mark Vital's first two points of the night, but to your point earlier, Chris, he doesn't need to score to be a vital part of this Baylor team. He already has five rebounds tonight. Two on the shot clock. Pack had it partially blocked, no matter, it's a shot clock violation. Still motivated, this Baylor team, Chris. Yeah, I'm telling you, it, it's all about, it's all about habits. You know, it really is. It, it's, you know, we talk about culture so much, but th this, what they have done here at Baylor, they look out for each other. It's, it's really, it's really incredible. Davion Mitchell slicing through for his first two of the second half. He's got nine. And we've mentioned this a couple of times, Chris. You know, I think the motto of succeeding this year in college basketball has become get old and stay old. Well, nobody has done that better than Scott Drew. The average age of the starting five for his Baylor Bears, 22 and a half years old. Would you believe that's older than the average starting five of the Chicago Bulls this year? Well, you know, again, in this day and age in college basketball where the game's trending younger, if you can get a team that buys into process, you're going to have a chance because process builds character. And, you know, we spent so much time analyzing Duke and Kentucky and their one and dones and why are they struggling? The answer is obvious because they've tried to skip steps. That they are trying to, they are investing in outcome before they go through process. And you look at some of the best teams in this league, you look at the ACC, for example, Florida State, Virginia, who have been the best team in, teams in that league for a few years now. Those programs invest in process. And then ultimately you get the outcome you want. You can't skip steps in this thing. And, and this team, this Baylor team has character because they invest in process. There's substance to this team. Mark Vital has three straight buckets. And that was well said. I've, I've heard get old, stay hold mentioned a lot, but I've never heard it explained quite like that. So aside from the obvious talent and the exploits that you see on the floor, offensively, and defensively from this Baylor team, they have that intangible factor as well. There's the defense, another deflection by the Baylor Bears, and it will be Baylor basketball when we return. Davion Mitchell has been living in the paint. Gets his angle, uses that strength. A little kiss. Couple of fun blockbuster games this Saturday on the SEC Big 12 Challenge. In addition to those games, Chris Spatola and I will have Oklahoma State hosting Arkansas battle of two blue chip recruits coming into the college game in Moses Moody and Kate Cunningham. Here in Waco at 64-32, number two Baylor rolling against the Kansas State Wildcats. And you might be asking yourself, does Scott Drew still have his five starters on the floor? Why do you think that is, Chris? 
I think he's getting them a run, you know, regardless of the score. You know, in these, this time of COVID, Rich, your season could be put on pause tomorrow. And so you got to take advantage of every time you're out there on that floor playing a game. And so I think regardless of the score, he's getting his team a run, and he's going to play them because you never know what happens tomorrow. Good point. Mark Vital has shown up in this second half defensively. Eight points, four for four from the field. That goes along with his five rebounds. So all of a sudden there's been a revitalized Mark Vital offensively the last couple of games. He scored eight of the last ten Baylor points. And now he's running the floor. Gives it up. Mitchell. Got it. And you can hear him with no fans or limited fans in the building. You can hear Mitchell call for it. And Vital knew he was there. And, and so often, Rich, guys who are wide open and they don't get the ball, they'll turn and he'll point at Vital and complain to him, why didn't you throw it to me? He said, I didn't even know you were there. Yeah. So a lot of times, make that pass being completed is on the guy who's waiting there wide open, calling for the ball. And you can hear Mitchell do it with, with hardly any fans in the building. That word you used earlier, unselfish. I mean, every single player has buy-in on that. Just the, the other day when Jared Butler was putting up 30 in their game and everyone was asking him about it and all the players were saying, we were thrilled for him because every time he'd knock down a three-pointer, he wouldn't be thumping his chest. He'd be saying, hey, good pass. Well, this day and age, Rich, where defenses have grown more and more sophisticated, the pass has become an increasingly valuable weapon. You know, Baylor doesn't have ball stoppers, guys who are unwilling to move it, you know, where the ball sticks. Well, Davion Mitchell heating up from downtown. He is, and there's that pass, that kind of Euro throwback pass from Vital, and then, you know, just a wide open three. I mean, they just, Kansas State just allowing guys to, to come down in transition, set their feet at that three-point line, and take open threes. Davion Mitchell now with 17 points. His career high is 20. He had that the last time out against Kansas State. It's a 40-point lead for the number two Baylor Bears. Assuming they go on to win this game, they will tie their second longest ever win streak to start a season. 2017, they started out 15-0 and as well. And there's Teague with the throw down. It's just too easy for Baylor tonight. Luke Kasuki gets in the scoring column. Scott Drew recently passed his dad Homer Drew on the all-time career wins list. Now he's up to 376. When I asked him about that, he said, well, the only thing it's good for is bragging rights at the holidays. Sit around the Thanksgiving table and he's got bragging rights now. Hey, as we all know, during the holidays, bragging rights is a good thing to have. No doubt. So Butler and Teague, starters still on the floor. The other three, Chamwachachua, Flagler, and Meyer off the bench. Mm, an open look, and he knocks it down. Stop me if you've heard this before. Macy Oteague with 18, Davion Mitchell with 17, Jared Butler with 13. Best three-man backcourt in all of college basketball. Timeout on the floor, 11.55 to go. It's academic in Waco. Well, they say in the martial arts, a fist is stronger than five individual fingers. Baylor is delivering a five-finger death punch to Kansas State tonight, up 77-35. And according to ESPN's BPI, Chris, Baylor actually has the best chance 
to win a national title, followed closely behind by Gonzaga. So if those two teams ever do get to face each other on the floor, who would you give the advantage to? This percentage actually surprises me. Um, you know, if this was two weeks ago, Rich, I would have said Gonzaga. And I, and I think I did at some point to somebody because of their balance. You know, you could, if you want to play through Drew Timmy on the post, you can do that. You, obviously, their perimeter is outstanding. They've got perimeter shooting. I mean, they just, their balance is so good. But here's why I think Baylor wins that game now. A, they defend a lot better than Gonzaga. N nobody defends like Baylor in the country. Nobody. Like, it's not even... There's not even a question. And then the, the development of Jonathan Chamachachua, who will continue to get better, I think is a difference maker for this team. So I, I think right now, with the way that they shoot it and with how hard they are to, to scout and plan for, I, I would say Baylor right now. That's high praise coming from Chris Patola because I know, all kidding aside, you are supremely high on Jalen Suggs. I think, and this is all due respect to Kate Cunningham, I think Jalen Suggs is the number one pick in the draft. He, he's an absolute killer. And, I mean, go down the line. Timmy is, is if Luca Garza wasn't playing, I'd say Timmy is the most efficient post scorer in college basketball. Mm -hmm. They're tough. I mean, I think it'd be a great game. I wish we had seen it earlier in the year. Well, Matt Meyer, the sixth Baylor Bear with at least one three-pointer tonight. I said it earlier in the game, Rich, I'm going to ask you, if you walked into Baylor's practice and you had never seen any Baylor player before, you just walked in cold, and you look out, you see a 6'9 guy who can shoot it, pass it, put it on the floor, what are you thinking about Matt Meyer in the context of this roster? Stud. Number well one said. on the scouting report. Well said. <laughs> Succinct. You know, it's funny, for his first couple of seasons, he was known as, whatever you want to say, high-volume shooter, all of those things. A little bit of a, of a wild stallion. You know, he got in, you knew he was going to pound the ball into the deck and get his shot up. But he's as much of a team guy as everyone else on this roster is. He's grown up. That's what college basketball, college is supposed to be about. And he's got great guys around him. Baylor leading the nation in average margin of victory, just over 24 points a game. That's the widest margin of victory for any team in college basketball since the 1998-99 Duke Blue Devils. They ended up going undefeated in ACC play, went all the way to the NCAA title game where they got upset by UConn that year. Speaking of number one picks in the draft, Elton Brand was on that Duke team, was the ACC's player of the year, was the number one pick in the draft in 1999. Now we see Teague and Butler both taking a seat. 10-21 to go. You might want to presume that that might be the last we'll see of them. There's a turnover. And the foul by Mitchell. Baylor Bears certainly don't have it easy the rest of the way by any stretch. On Saturday in the SEC Big 12 Challenge, they'll be welcoming the Auburn Tigers. The newly recharged Auburn Tigers with Sharif Cooper, who has taken college basketball by storm. It's going to be a frenetic pace in that one. Look at that play by Mitchell. Almost came away with the steal at center court. Miguel, nice pass in the paint. And Rudy Williams will go to the line. Kansas State, by the way, speaking of SEC Big 12, will be playing Texas A&M. And then listen to this gauntlet. 
at Kansas, home to Texas Tech, and home to the Texas Longhorns. Welcome to life in the Big 12. Well, tomorrow night it's a clash of SEC powerhouses in women's basketball, number four, South Carolina. It's Starkville to take on number 21, Mississippi State. That one tips at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. And when I hear those two teams pitted against one another, I have those fantastic flashbacks to the 2017 National Championship yeah, game. Yeah. That was one for the memory banks. Here's Mitchell, another triple for Davion Mitchell, his fourth tonight. And he matches his career high with 20. Just a little bit of daylight. Uh, you, you, you can't let him catch with that much daylight. John Wachachua bothered the shot by Bradford and came away with it. Look out. Meyer in attack mode. Not that time. Here's a loose ball, and Flagler comes away with it. Still hustling with nine minutes to go and an 83-38 lead. Well, and that's not going to stop. You know what I mean? Like, they, they're not mailing anything in. They, they are not giving up any possessions, and that's why they're good. I mean, that's why they are a favorite to win a national championship because they, they have standards, they have habits that, that they're just not going to give up because this is almost a 50-point game. And we talked to Scott Drew about that. What, what drives your team from Jump Street? And he said, you know, it doesn't take a lot of reminding them that they missed out on a chance to make a run to the Final Four last year. You know, Kansas could say that as well, but not a lot of other teams were as good last year as Baylor is again this year. But these last couple of seasons, they have been as good as anybody in college basketball. And Davion Mitchell has a new career high with 22. Bradford goes up strong, met by Meyer. He'll go to the line. You know, Davion Mitchell turning it on offensively, Chris. Where would you put him in the ranks of on-ball defenders across the country? Yeah, he's, you know, I had to submit. I'm a voter for the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year Award, and, and he was, I think we had to submit 15 names, Rich, and he was, he was certainly one of my 15. He'll be in the top five. You know what's amazing? They've got two of them. I, I voted for both uh, Mark Vidal and Davion Mitchell. I don't and, blame and both, Yeah, I mean, both those guys are in the top ten whenever we pare it down for the next vote. I mean, he is, and that's what he was, right, last year, Rich? Like, he was the defensive guy, the on-ball defender. I don't think he started to get more comfortable by the end of the year offensively. He is a different player this year offensively. He is so much more comfortable on that end. Bradford knocks down the free throw. Coming up on eight minutes to go. Baylor looking square in the sights of a 15th straight win to start this 2020-21 campaign. It'll tie their second longest ever win streak to start a season. Inside, Lewis. And he'll be fouled with the timeout on the floor, and Baylor up 85-41. Davion Mitchell, a career high tonight. He has been a bucket getter all night long. Davion Mitchell. But he is a key role player and a permanent fixture in the starting lineup, and he has had a long and sometimes difficult road to the Baylor basketball program. He's from the Congo. He emigrated to the United States in 2014 after spending time in England and in France and in South Africa. And he also had to suffer through the untimely and tragic death of his older brother, Lehi, Levi, due to a uh, drug, an accidental drug overdose. He's reticent to talk about it, but now he's starting to open up to his teammates, to reporters, and he has become an integral part of this team, not only as a teammate, but also on the floor. Chris Scott Drew calls him 
an elite screener. What does he mean by that? He's a guy who understands, first of all, he's not afraid of contact, but he understands angles. You know, and how a, a good screener is, is really instrumental in getting a guard in the direction of going downhill and getting the guard started in the, in the angle or direction that he wants to go to the basket. Uh, he's good at flipping the screen. He understands when, it, when he's got to do that. His timing on that is good. Um, and then part of being a good screener is, is the want to. You know, to say, hey, look, I understand my role. And in this offense, you're doing a lot of that for these, these ball-dominant guards. Bamba, one of the very few handful of Baylor players who didn't actually redshirt a year. As Davion Mitchell goes back to work. And you talked a bunch that tonight, Chris, case in point, all these guards getting open looks from three, a lot of that has to do to the activity of the big men for the Baylor Bears. Yeah, no question. I mean, you know, you look at the lineage of bigs now that they're developing here at, at Baylor, or have had, frankly, but, you know, Thamba's been a good soldier. You know, he came in, he was going to bide his time as a freshman, he was playing behind Tristan Clark, and then all of a sudden Freddie Gillespie comes out of nowhere and has the year he had last year, so now you're playing behind him as Mitchell. My goodness. But, you know, it, it, for Davion. And now it's Thamba's turn. And he's making the most of it. And so is Davion Mitchell, by the way. 28 points, a game high. You always remember your career high. Always. What was yours? I, uh, it was a light 43, Rich. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. I would never I call him Spatola. And now Davion Mitchell is just get the house down. <laughs> He may pass 43 tonight, though, at this rate. My goodness, 31 for Davion Mitchell. Seven triples tonight. Ooh. <laughs> Let's see. A limited yeah, crowd this is going wants up. Davion Mitchell this to jack it up again. Up. Heat check. Oh, it was short that time. Mitchell scored the last 14 points for the Baylor Bears. <laughs> and the ball goes out of bounds, and you know that'll do it for Davion Mitchell. A career night for number 45, the 6'2 redshirt junior out of Hinesville, Georgia. And you think he's going to have a little juice in the tank on Saturday when the team that he transferred from, Auburn, comes to Waco to take on these Baylor Bears. It's a guy who shot in the low 30s percentage-wise when he was at Auburn and last season from the three-point line. A much-improved shooter. And it's got to feel good, man. Anytime you get into that 30 range point-wise, that is a good feeling. And Mark Vital says, why not try a three-pointer? He's 0 for 5 on the season now. And Scott Drew starting to empty his bench at the five-minute mark. Zach Loveday, number 32. Jordan Turner, number 5 on the floor. Vital thought about it. And there's a foul and an and one opportunity for Siri Lewis. Mark Vital's night is done. He gets a round of applause. Well deserved. Came alive in the second half offensively with eight points on four for six shooting. 
Also had five rebounds tonight. Here comes Jordan Turner, highly touted redshirt freshman out of Houston. And Loveday with the follow. Zach Loveday has a rare two points. If you know anything about Big 12 basketball, Zach Loveday is reminiscent of Avery Benson from Texas Tech with the hair, the man bun, the facial hair. Is he, does he have as much cowboy as Avery Benson had? No, That's and no one knows that better than you. <laughs> So Baylor knocking on the door of a hundred burger for the second time this season against Kansas State. They put up an even hundred in their first win against K-State back on December 19th. Now with four minutes to go, they're four points away from doing it again. You know, it's it's going to be tough sledding for a, a team with the composition like Kansas State has. You look, you look at this league, Rich, and you mentioned the gauntlet that K-State has after... Texas A&M, the teams at the top of this league share a similar DNA. They defend, they rebound, they have incredible guards, and they're not relying on freshmen. And and that's that's tough to compete when you've got a team as young and as inexperienced as Kansas State. There's Love Day. Out to Meyer for three. Got it. Give the assist to Zach Love Day. Well, the crowd wants 100. Are they going to get it now? Flagler! 101 points for the Baylor Bears, and there's still 3.14 to go. They're loving it in the Farrell Center. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Davion Mitchell has his tonight, 31 points, seven threes, and we're going to show all siete of them to you right here. Most of them, his feet are set. I mean, just catching on balance, feet pointed to him towards the basket. And once you get it going like this, Rich, and obviously the score, you, you start to see a bit of a bigger basket, but what a night for Davion Mitchell. If he starts shooting them at this clip, we know Butler and T can do that. Oh my word, this is scary. 42% from three on the season for Mitchell. Butler shooting it at 49%. This is a team with very few, if any, weaknesses. And to that end, Chris, let, let's put the, the villain's hat on, if you will. What could derail a team like Baylor? You know what I would do to Baylor? I would zone Baylor. All right, I'll tell you after the break. I, I'll, we'll delve into that, Rich. Good tease. That's called a tease in the TV industry. Don't go anywhere. Coming together for Ted Lasso, Scott Drew, and his Baylor Bears cruising up 50 on the Kansas State Wildcats. And all the starters and most of the key reserves will be watching for the rest of this game, especially that young man. That's Davion Mitchell, and he ended up with 31 tonight to lead Baylor, but it was a team effort by every stretch of the imagination. 60% from three-point range tonight. 16 for 27, and 22 assists as well. Loveday misses, but the follow by Mark Patterson, his first points as a Baylor Bear. See number 13, that's Jackson Moffitt in the game. Couple of walk-ons. This is what keeps everybody enthused, right? Teammates, this the fans. Point. In a 50-point game, this is, this is high entertainment right now. Oh, 
Patterson tried for the steal. Instead, Siri Lewis throws it down. Well, 112 points is the season high for these Baylor Bears. 106, though, Chris, is their all-time most points scored in Big 12 history. They're three points away from that. You see everybody loving the effort from number 35, Mark Patterson. And in a game challenge. where they're wearing other people's names on their jersey for the Immortal 10, this is the first time that Mark Patterson has his name on the back of his jersey. Look at the ups. This is a big time, a big time challenge by Patterson. He's a walk-on. They had a special order of jersey for Mark Patterson. Making the most of his moment in the spotlight. So we got Patterson a bucket. Now we got to get Jackson Moffat a bucket. Here's the freshman Turner. Forces it up into traffic. Under a minute and a half to go. Baylor will improve to 15-0 for the third time in program history. Last time they did it was 2017. And they'll improve to 8-0 in conference play for the second consecutive year. They started last year with that identical unblemished mark in conference play. Miles all around, but Scott Drew still coaching him up. They were looking for Jackson Moffat on the back door. Here's the seven footer for three. Pretty nice stroke. So now Baylor has matched its all-time high in points scored in Big 12 play with 106. And that's in regulation time. But they have done nothing but increase their average margin of victory. It was 24 plus coming in. That number will go up and that leads the nation. Next up for Baylor, the Auburn Tigers come calling. Well, K-State usually doesn't dominate at the free throw line. They did that tonight, but that was about the only battle that they've won against the number two Baylor Bears. Here's Moffitt, just off the back iron. The seven-footer Loveday gets the rebound. You know this Baylor team wants to get Jackson Moffitt another look. Well, if, if there's a guy with a mullet on the court, he's got to get a bucket. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a rule. That is a hard and fast rule. I mean, does it get any better than Moffitt with the mullet? And Love Day with the man bun. What? What? Misses the it's first a, free throw. It's a handsome group Scott Drew's got out there on the floor. A very, a very handsome group. And you talked about never forgetting when you got your career high, Davion Mitchell. These guys will never forget a game like this, getting some major minutes at the end of a blowout win. Now with 107, that's the most ever in Big 12 regulation games for the Baylor Bears. And Kansas State is just gonna run the clock out. 107-59, a 48 point drubbing by the Baylor Bears. And they will improve to 15-0 on the season. Still undefeated, one of four in major basketball to stay unblemished on the year.
For everybody here at ESPN, including Chris Spatola, I'm Rich Allenberg saying, go long. Thanks for watching Big 12 on ESPN. Now, stay right where you are. Sports Center is coming up next with John Anderson and Kenny May. Baylor wins again.